Hello everyone, this is Waldorf. This is Tatler. And now I have an Oathmark battle report. Number seven. Seven. <laughs> oh, you got two more to go and you run out of numbers. Um, so I'm, I've decided to try to play humans this time. There you go. And a friend of ours, one of our friends, uh, decided to try the undead. Okay. This is the second... I think it's the second time they've played, played the undead. But the first but time, first time for you I to play humans. humans. I think you okay. played them that first time. I played them right? the first time, yes, using my... Yeah. Viking, Viking Asklander yeah, guys. I used my... He says it has a hobbies. Yeah. Um, so I took a prince, a captain, and two champions. Okay. <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, third level wizard, <laughs> the second level wizard. I just like the mix of the three and a two and mm -hmm. give the, other, the little guy the low casting stuff. Mm -hmm. Although the fireball is a seven, which is yep. kind of it's not kind of casting. tough on it's fifty fifty for two dice, yep. maybe slightly better, slightly fifty two or fifty four something. There you yeah, go. thank you. Um, so he took the fireball and fleet feet. Mm -hmm. The uh, third level took stolen march, which is a move uh, move ability, which is I, I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, fireball and blade mastery. I don't remember what Blade Mastery is. Plus one weapon skill. Okay. Plus one, sorry. <laughs> Plus one fight skill. Right. I took three units of four heavy cav, um, knowing that a champion, two champions and a prince were going to go in those units okay. to bring them up to five. I did take five mounted rangers. Mm -hmm. um, I took 20 warriors, 16 archers, a unit of 20 archers, two units of ogres, and one heavy catapult. Right. You know, archers are a lot cheaper when you play humans. They are? <laughs> Not as good either, but... No, but a lot cheaper. But they're a lot cheaper. And there's my opponent. He took a revenant prince, a revenant champion on a horse, and a third level, level three necromancer who had revived, dispel, and the summon barrow worm. Okay. And another vampire, level three, I guess. Sorry. The vampire's always level three. Who had revived smoke and a barrel worm? Summon barrel worm. Summon barrel worm. He had two wraiths. Uh, and just for clarity, these numbers behind the spells are the casting, casting value yes. on a on on a d10. On a d10, and you get as many d10s as the level of your guy. And both are threes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he's got a. If he casts that spell, he has to roll three dice and hope for a ten. Yep. Um, what's the chance of that, Smarty Pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Not saying that one, are you? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah, I am. Three chances for a 10. Yeah, what's that come out to, roughly? Uh, roughly at... 15%, maybe? 14%. Uh, 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 20 Revenant Warriors, two units of 12, 20 skeletal... Actually, three units of 20 skeletal soldiers. Yes. One's not as good because they have a, a lower Small S. S. He's a short guy in there. <laughs> A little unit of 11 ghouls and just to fill them out and four revenant cav. All right. So we're going to line up here and we decided to uh, play a, <laughs> to mix a ninth aid scenario in and we put these two tokens. Not again. What's that? So not again. <laughs> this hasn't gone well the last couple times. Uh, this time we decided ahead <laughs> of the game okay. that if whoever ended up with a unit with at least a full rank within five inches of these, the most units within five of the inches of either one of these tokens gets a bonus 500 points. Okay. Is how we decided we to do it. Okay. So it heavily weights it towards this because there's a thousand points worth of that and we're playing a 2,500 point game. Right. Um, so we decided that. Okay. Um, and if you can see, there's a fence, a field, a fence, a woods, which is difficult, a hill, building, a difficult terrain for the difficult for the ruins, and then I think we played it difficult but not cover for the water. Okay, and the ruins are heavy cover or light, just regular cover. I think they're just cover. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a difference in the game between heavy and light cover. Isn't there a minus two cover? I don't know. Maybe mm. so. So there you have that. Um, that's my army. And there's my two mounted mages in the back. Uh, catapult to the left. A couple of ogres. And Where'd you dig those guys out from? What's that? My old ogres? <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
I was looking for stuff, and they were like, oh, they're there on that shelf. Didn't even know you had them. I just assumed that trolls were going to show up. Yeah. No, <laughs> I got ogres. Okay. Uh, and off across the board, you can see his army lined up against me, all packed into the center there. Um, I do have a unit of... Where's my unit of... I'm missing another unit of knights, which is, I think, on the, on, the, right, on the far right. It's the far right, I think okay. on the far left is the unit of the... Cavalry archers. Oh, you've added a unit of uh, halberdiers I hadn't seen before. What? Really? Yeah. Oh. The guys in blue. I've had that for ages. No, no, I hadn't seen them. Okay. There we go. There's a better picture. Mm -hmm. That's got everybody. I don't know why the other picture's there, basically. Mm. All right. So we got that. And more pictures, more pictures. So. Some smoke. He starts off. He wants to smoke out my catapult, mm -hmm. um, which just. The only thing it really does is forces me into a minus one, no matter what. Because I have to use indirect. Yep. Because I can't really see anything. It's like you moved your knights forward on the flank. Yeah, my those my knights forward on the far flank. The archers came forward. And your horse archers came forward. Yep. And my mage has done something. I think it's attempted to cast a spell okay. on the guys on the left. And he's creeped forward with his two flanks. Yeah, at this point. And there's and the rest of my movement. And he's creeped forward a little bit more, and you've brought some more knights. And some knights. Ogres up, and more ogres up, and face some archers to the flank. What's that all about? What's this? Your archer's facing to the flank. Archer's facing the flank. Your archers are facing oh, um, nobody. <laughs> they pivoted and moved up to get out from behind the smoke. Ah. So this turn, the next turn, they can pivot and move up again. I'm sorry, okay. wheel and move up again. Okay is the reason they're facing to the flank. Okay. Because um, I don't have anyone even close to my range at mm -hmm. this point. So um, we go, and of course, his magic, He <laughs> at some point during that turn, he managed to roll a 10 on one of the, I think he had to cast them, use them both to cast the summon barrel worm. Okay. And that HH token you see right there is the place where he summoned the barrel worm. Okay. The problem he had when he started summoning it after he thought about it was he hadn't considered where he placed his mages early on. Right. And had line of sight issues. Oh. So he couldn't really just put it in the middle of my line. Right. Okay. He remembered later on we talked about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, I would have, if I would have placed it, if I would have thought about it more early, I would have placed so I could see back into your lines and place it back there. Um, so he did manage to get it though. So we're going to go to turn two, and um, the what's happened is the barrel worm actually came up. He rolled for random and hit this unit of five knights that are in front of it. Mm -hmm. He did a wound to me. I did a wound to him, and we both bounced an inch. Wow, that's lucky. I was extremely lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and the model looks like a worm. So and the model is fantastic for this one. I yep. love. I actually love that model. I like. That's one of my favorite models. Mm -hmm. um, he uses it for the uh, whatever that thing is. Yeah, I should have bought them when they were cheaper. <laughs> oh, that's the uh, Forge World thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so he did that. He bounced me back. Like I said, luckily I um, wasn't too shaken by that. Mm -hmm. Like you catapulted some skeletons at some point? I did. <laughs> um, there's a picture of how he's okay. treating me. Not I nice. can't imagine how you only lost one night. That's some bad rolling. He was bad rolling. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, my knights are the big armor knights. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, they're 14. Still, so he's like an eight, isn't he? <laughs> um, but he's big, yeah. Um, anyway, so we have that. And I took shielding, so I brought him down by one at least. Okay. So he was only doing four dice. Like yeah. I said, I got lucky. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then, of course, his smoke comes. He rolls a... I said, oh, he forgot to roll it for smoke. And he said, oh, okay. So what happens? If you roll one, it goes away. Bing, it goes away. The one or one or the ten or whatever. It yeah. was. it's a one chance it goes yeah. away. Um, so we've got that, and back to turn two. You can see my knights on the far right mm -hmm. have come up, swung into the center of the board. Yep, uh, that's his white on the right of that unit. Actually, there's a white on each side of the ghoul. So okay, okay. Um, you're hiding your mage. I, again, I did my. I did this. I just told you about this last game. I did the same thing in this game. 
managed to put my mage behind the building for some reason. Mm -hmm. And now she's limited in what she can do. Yeah. Um, Because if I move to get out behind the building, and now I can't pivot, and I've got the narrow arc, and it's just annoying. My fault. All my fault. And because we're placing her here, pivoting in his move turn doesn't really even yep. help me. Yep, yep. So, <laughs> because I can't get past the building if I pivot too much. Anyway, just bad things. Need to, need to practice that more. Um, yeah, I think use of mages in this game is uh, one of the hardest things. I think you're probably master. to get to get used to that and get mm-hmm. um and okay, so on the far the only thing that's really happened is the troll the unit you know, on the far right has come up and the ogres towards the center have come up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um we're gonna keep going back and forth with some stuff here. Uh, some more smoke. He keeps putting out smoke. Now the smoke um is much smaller. He can only see this much of the field. All right. The question is, does it have to be the full distance? I mean, he could have angled it different and got the same effect, so we didn't, weren't that concerned about it. But... Oh, I assume it had to be 10 inches. Okay. So he would have had to have angled it. Because I remember I was having challenges figuring out my... Because I was... That's why I was doing those funky angles when we played. Just right. like, okay. I'm going to get 10 inches in here. Okay. So, that, didn't, huge... that, that didn't come out right. Uh, yeah, not a big <laughs> the... <laughs> All right. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that's what's there. Stupid purple worm. My mm-hmm. knights, actually, my knights, to top things off, must have been very nervous with that big thing in front of them because they failed their activation. Oh, okay. He as well. So yeah. I couldn't really get away. Okay. Which annoyed me. But Of course, uh, he has to get his leadership off, which is not easy. Yes, but... Yeah. Like an eight or something? Some crazy number? Yeah. No, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's an eight. Mm-hmm. And it only gets one die. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. He can move, but he can't charge me. So we're going on to turn three. And turn three, my knight came forward and smacked into something. What was there? Is there a barrow white there? I don't think it was a barrow white. Oh, I smacked into that unit. Oh, yeah, there's a unit right That there. unit. That's the revenant. That's the unit. revenant knight. The revenant okay. foot unit. Okay. So I came smacked forward. Smacked them and you hit Smacked it. on it, knocked them back. So he did and followed up. Yeah. I mean, I pushed him back a right, full, six, full six, okay. which pushed his knights back there as mm-hmm. well, which actually caused him problems because now he's kind of lined up right alongside that unit. He can move forward. He won't hit me. And his second action can only be to pivot or wheel, which means he can't get to my knights with his knights. Right, right. Um, so I was very happy with that. Of course, that doesn't help me versus the ghouls, but... I've got big armor, and they're not that good. Mm-hmm. And you got a big block of archers back here. What's that? And my archers are back there, ready to deal with the ghouls. Um, he, uh, his white shifted all the way off to the right. He attacked me. I've taken a loss with my knights. Well, you took it in the last round, so. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. On the far, the ones on the right. Oh, those guys. Sorry, no, no. The ones on the right have taken a wound, and his guy has taken two. I can't imagine what would have happened. I may have fire. I think, yo, that's you what shoot I, him with the archers. I fireballed him. Fireball him, okay. I fireballed him because again, now when I bit, when I was complaining earlier about the weird narrow ang- angles with the mages, you can also play with that to make something farther away the only thing right. you can see, right? If it's right. on an edge, exactly. So I kind of played with that and managed to fireball and put two wounds on his white. Um, you can also, the black die, I've actually put a courage spell on the uh, knights as well on the top okay. right. Um, so we've got that. His, uh, his white came up and fought me. Did he or just get in front of you? No, he fought me and we pushed. I don't think, Nobody? looks like me, we, no one did a win. No one did anything? Okay. Correct. Um, so it looks like we pushed because I've mm-hmm. been activated now and we're two inches apart. Mm-hmm. So definitely looks like we fought and got pushed. Um, back to stuff. Moving over here. Ogres on the right are coming forward. Try to get yep. towards the fight. And here comes his guys who are got pushed back and got kind of... Luckily, the pushback, if you get pushed back 
and into another unit, that unit doesn't activate, but right. it does push it him does back. push him back, yep. So he's going to move that unit. Reposition. Just kind of shift off to the side a bit to make sure he's got it. He tried to activate the barrel worm and I think rolled a one or two and disappears. Anytime you try to activate the barrel worm and fail. The spell. If you're using a spell version. Yeah. On a one or two, you fail. Um, <laughs> finally make it back into the report. The guys on the far left, the archers, um, come around the corner and he sends a unit of skeletons out to deal with them. Horse archers. My horse archers. Yep. Right. But my other archers are plodding forward, trying to get past the smoke he's bothered me with. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So based on that, the two ogres there on the, the right in front of the smoke, they're going to charge forward, pound into the uh, skeletons and push them back six, which of course is pushing the other back along, other unit back with them. Okay. <clears throat> um, without taking a wound, so, you know, I want to point out. These guys are awesome. <laughs> Those old school models with that, um, with that poor basing. <laughs> you like the basing? <laughs> that, was my, that was my old style basing. Yeah. Yeah, I need to fix those if I'm going to use them. Um, I think that basing is older than most people can listen to this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may be correct. Because <laughs> that was all the way back when Games Workshop allowed <laughs> ogres in the Orc and Goblin. Yep, army. yep. <laughs> Oof. All right. Turn four. Uh, turn four, his knights uh, activate first. They pivot, slam into the side of the ogres, push me all the way back to you. Push me back. Killed one, did an extra wound, and pushed me back six. Okay. So you can see there. Um, did you see that? I did. Okay. I did, but I'm not that concerned with it. No, I was just curious if you saw it because of the... Uh... Extended thing, yeah. a forward arc on single base unit, single rank units. Okay. Extended for, oh no, he would. He he didn't. He just pivoted completely. There was no. Oh, I see. He can't see me, but he just wheeled. Oh, oh he just he went. He just wheeled around to my and then, flank. And his and second charged. move, he was in range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. So right. he didn't. Yeah, it was nothing. Nothing surprising. Nothing okay. really surprising there. Um, but that let me do something so anyway so over here you can see the ghouls um he didn't want to charge me last turn but this turn they got a little brave and charged me mm -hmm. we actually did a wound a piece and pushed okay you can see we looks like we pushed apart yeah that's what it looks like there um the <laughs> i tr i tried to just ignore him with my uh horse archers up on the top left and just ride around him uh -huh. um, and he made his activation on a single die and was able to charge me. I was hoping he would not make it. Hoping he'd roll. It's low. only a, it's only a four. Yeah, that was a dumb. Not, it was it was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Um. So he charged me in the rear. Um. And the revenant knights. Oof! A lot of stuffs happened here. A lot of stuffs happened. So. His vampire, I believe, hit me again with this. Or, sorry, his white hit these. Oh, no. This is that weird thing. <laughs> My archers charged into his ghouls. Okay. And they could hit the ghouls, but then to get into the middle, that had to force this unit of knights back. Okay. The unit of knights on the right. Yeah. It's that weird rule we ran into that other game where they have to you push the unit back so that you can complete the cinch up. Mm -hmm. Remember what I'm talking about? But I thought I think they had to go that the other way. They just go directly back, right? And that because that, that's the way the knights were facing towards the top left. They were facing the revenant. Oh, I thought it was revenants. back back from the uh, unit that was there. So I thought they go this way. No, it says directly back. I understand, but I, I thought it was from the aspect of the char oh. the unit that hits them. Not we from interpreted their own. directly back as okay. to be directly backwards. Okay, yeah, something to check. Okay, so um, anyway. Up here on the top right, his um, I think wraith is wraith. I believe charged in me, and I fought my champion to the side. Okay, so he had like one guy. He lost a guy. So I lost the guy earlier. Um, I believe. Oh, it's only four, yeah, and so not five. Okay. <clears throat> they started the game with five, and they lost one. Early. Okay. 
Um, well, it's like you're down to three. That's why. I'm... Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I am. Yeah. Maybe, anyway, maybe he killed one. Okay. Um, so they're there. The uh, other thing that, other rule that we weren't used to, the fact that champion, if you decide to fight with the champion, you decide to fight with the champion to the flank, to the front, right, right. whatever. All right. Um, so we've got that. Uh, on. Come on, quick. There we go. Um, over here, the archers are, more whatever smoke. reason, they're content to stay behind this smoke. Oh, we didn't cast more smoke. It's just the same smoke. It's the same smoke. It's okay. sitting there. I managed to get off the... You're probably afraid of those knights. <laughs> I, I, but they weren't there before. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, up top, you can see his uh, skeletons have actually beaten my horse archers. And he elected to push me six. Okay, but you still have a good number of horse archers. But he only killed one, I believe. Okay, so that worked out for It you. worked out fairly well, actually. Mm -hmm. um, over on the left, yeah, you can see that my own knights have come up a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, they want to get closer to the revenants, but not enough to be charged by them. Just a question of how close you are to those knights. <laughs> um, and I'm also back far enough. From knights. So on turn five, so there's a lot of options here. <laughs> this is one of those. This is one of those things where the initiative. You get the initiative, and you're like, oh, okay, I go first. Oh, well. Well, I've got problems. I've got yep. don't want to get charged on the flank over there by the rev, the white on the far right. I don't want the revenants to charge my archers in the flank. I you know I don't want the knights on the hill to finish off my uh, <laughs> my ogre or my archers. There's just so many things going. And right. of course, I got my horse archers on the top left who are in trouble. And in this regard, this game is similar to Age of Sigmar, and that because you're going back and forth, right. Um, you really need to think about the number of things you're putting in harm's way or getting ready for fighting, not to give the advantage to your opponent. Correct. I agree completely. So uh, based on that, I posed the, I took the biggest threat, I thought, as the knights on the hill. Mm -hmm. And my knights, my knights did a wheel, which them. easily brought them within charge range. Yep. And they slammed into them. And actually eliminated them. Okay. So did some had some good rolling. There is a prince in this unit. You're like a or a cap. Sorry, captain. You're like a six on the charge or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 And one of them is a champion die. Mm -hmm. It's to his flank, which is another plus right. one or something. So, um, which also saved my ogre, of course. But um, he charged into the flank. Oh, yeah, because they don't have the crumble rule. The revenants, right? They do. Oh, they have the crumble they rule. Do. They don't have the other rule. Yeah, yeah. They don't have the other rule. They don't have the mindless. The rule. mindless rule. Yeah. So his um, wraith on the in the center here decided to take his turn and charged into my archers, beat them in combat and pushed them back six, which forced my knights back into this ruin. Okay. Um, that over on the left. The skeletons come in again and hit me, killed another one. This time he only pushed me an inch. He won the fight. I killed one or two of him. One of him. He killed one of me. Actually, okay. I guess we went a push. Maybe been a push because the leaves are two inches away. Yeah. yeah. Um, over here. His, uh, his white over on the far right is kind of playing, playing ring around the rosy with my guys. Okay. Um, I, I believe I failed my activation last turn and couldn't go at him. Okay. Is the problem there. My ogres have come forward. You can see on the far right, just getting in the middle of stuff. It's like you must have faced him, and then he just walked around you. Yeah. The cavalry. Yeah. Okay. I think they failed their activation, and all they could do was face yeah. him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my archers are coming through the smoke. Uh, my foot troops are moving up to get into the fight now that there's two small units of... Skeletons? Not great big units of skeletons, and mm -hmm. they're behind the knight, so they're feeling really brave. Okay. Um Got that going for us. And I think that's about it. At some point, we're still on turn six. Your mage must have zapped his... Uh, My mage got mad and zapped off his uh, white... Wraith. Wraith. Wraith or white? White. Barrow. Barrow whites? Uh, yeah, barrow whites. whites. Yeah. Um, so they're there, which is good, which is going to free up my unit. It's turn seven. Mm -hmm. 
And turn seven. So we fought around to combat the my knights. He came forward with this. Well, I my sorry, my foot. Two things happened. My knights came forward and hit the unit of skeletons on the left, pushed okay. him back six, killed a bunch of skeletons. Using the prince's active second activation, I believe, l- moved the other unit of um, what you call it, the f- halberd guys, mm-hmm. who came forward, hit his other skeleton. Eh, some maybe something else hit his skeletons, or maybe they just moved back. I notice his skeletons are back. Yeah, because you don't have that, you don't have that much movement. Oh, that ogre was still in the field, I think. Yeah, there was an ogre there. The yeah. ogre charged some. I think okay. the ogre charged the skeletons and pushed them back. But then he sort of why would okay. Anyway. And then you would and then I, what, does, Actually, he have, I does, he, he, does he have a character in there and he sm- smacked your knights he might around? Have just killed me. No, I just lost him. Okay. I just didn't do. He rolled well with the the skeletons and okay pushed me back. Um. Or sorry, I pushed him back. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, he still did manage to kill two, which okay. is disappointing. Um, the archers came up. Archers come up to, to support. Off here on the right. I assume he's most of his spells. He's trying to glu- grow back skeletons. He's not growing back skeletons because that's almost. He's um, now he's putting dice into. He's putting more dice into the stupid barrel worm at this okay. point. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, he's putting six dice a turn into it. Okay, he's trying to get the barrel worm in. Yeah, if I remember correctly, he did six. He rolled 21 dice to get the okay. next one that shows up, <laughs> <laughs> which gives you a clue as to what's coming. Yeah. Um, and yep, and there it is. So on the bottom of this turn, the token shows up there right in front of my two knights. Mm-hmm. Um and that's what we've got. Looks like we fought another round of combat up there with the horse archers and his yep. skeletons, and I'm down to two now. The problem is I'm, I keep getting pushed down, and he's hitting me before I go, Yeah. which I'm, I'm a kind of okay with because it's keeping his knights, his skeleton, that skeleton unit occupied at this right. point. Um, so got that. Um, and the barrel worm... You know, at the, you know, at the end of the turn, it comes, it moves and comes up, and that's where it came up. Luckily, just missing my knights again. Mm-hmm. That was the same unit that got assaulted by him last time, so they're very happy about that resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, over here in the field, we're fireballing his characters. Characters, his vampire on the right and his white mm-hmm. on the left. You can see my mage on the right has uh, also. Yes. Line up to shoot, do doing it. some double, double, uh, you got a menage going on over here. Yeah, we're not doing a lot. Two of mages sh- on a character. <laughs> yeah. And we're not doing a lot of, uh, our shooting's not very effective because he's got the half damage from shooting with, with the two units in front of my archers. Uh, the, the, scout, rev- the revenants. And the the revenants have that rule? Yeah, it's an undead rule. Oh, okay. I think they almost all have it. Mm, okay. Um, so we get tired of it and my, uh, Knights came forward. What did they charge? Oh, yeah, the knights came forward, and I think they smacked the revenants. Yeah, you must again. be whittling them down because they were they were bigger. So you must be doing something with your archers. I'm doing that, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you wipe them out. So wipe them out. Well, they're I think they're back behind his hand. Oh, okay. I don't think they're completely wiped out. I could be wrong. Nope, they're wiped out. So I wiped them out. His uh, wraith and got what, irritated at getting fireball. And I saw when you were doing that, he pivoted and. Yeah, I got too close. Yeah. Um, there was no reason for me to get that close. Mm-hmm. But I did. So, anyway. Got too close and he came out and smacked me. Wasn't happy about that. Um, my other unit of knights charged his vampire. Okay. And I believe they took him off, if I'm not mistaken. His um, <laughs> skeleton, the skeleton fight over here continues. <laughs> uh, this time he finally got me, I believe, because I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm gone. Say, so, because you're even in attacks almost. <laughs> yeah. The um, well, he's got five. To, well, I guess at that point I had four. Oh, yeah. Um, my two units of my two knights that were left in that unit charged into his skeleton block and pushed him back to the edge okay. of the table. Killed so many crumbles. Kill someone. one of me. Okay. And off in the center, the guys charged down the hill. No, I forget what happened over there. So you get rid of the vampire with your knights. 
Cover the vampire with my knight. My bowman shot off another ghoul in the water. Okay. And that's, I believe... Your other archers are coming forward Other now. archers are coming forward, ignoring that stupid... Well, you don't want to be in front of it. Worm. <laughs> well, it's only if it activates, it pivots and hits me. Yep. So it's a bad thing. Um, as long as I just need to hope it doesn't activate. Yep. And of course, it it only activates on an eight, nine, ten. Right. Goes away on a one, two. Yeah. So not a great, not great odds for him, but. Um, and there we go, moving up. With everything. Catapults there. What else do we got? Anything going on in these pictures? So they're there. I took a lot of pictures of nothing happening. Looks like it. Oh, this is the end of the game. This oh. was this is how the game ended. Sorry. Okay. And I was just taking pictures of the remaining units. Okay. So I've got a unit within the token on the left, within range of the token on the left. He does not, so I got points from that. He's got very few models left over, you know, he's got what? Five skeletons on the right, on the far left. One in his. Were you playing character. who had it last, or were you playing who had it at the end of the game? At the end of the game. Okay, it's, so either way, I have it. And what turn is it? Six. This is at the bottom of turn eight. We're already done. Okay, so you did. You played it all. You didn't give we up. We did play full. We played the full eight. Okay. Okay. Yes. So he had to hope that his gribbly turn and killed you to get that to, to, to make stop me you from not getting it. Get it. Correct. Yeah. Um, but you clearly, and I was willing to do it because I clearly had the one over here. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, I did not. Um, I had the archers. I guess I guess I do have it. Clearly. You have it because you have the archers. He's got nobody. He's got nobody. And, and you uh, probably have him on model count too. So yes, and I do because he's got very mm -hmm. little left. Because I killed both his whites. I killed a vampire and his uh, revenants, vampire. his cavalry. Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he's got one character left back here in this unit. He's got one in each unit, maybe. Okay. At best. So, but anyway, so that was it. And then, you know, my dead, of course, are over here piled along this <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. crumbled pile of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it was a, a big win for the humans. I actually kind of like playing the humans. I like playing my, I like bringing my Bretonians out. Yeah. <laughs> what, what can I say? Um, I like the human army. Yeah, I like the human army. A lot. So, the one thing, if I don't know if you, you make anybody watching this may notice, is the one thing I haven't bothered to do is change base sizing at all. Because you know these three units you can see here, the art, the both units of archers and the halberds are all on twenty millimeter bases. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to bother with it or not. Not at this point. Um, what I did is I bought, um, I'm just taking some strip bases. Right. So for, I got some Shogun ones and I also have some GW ones that are four deep or whatever. And my plan is just to play them on the 25 millimeter, uh, movement trays. So 125 by. Yeah. And then just 100. put, and just put the, uh, the filler base on the side just to, you know, occupy the. Yeah, you mentioned that to me, and I was considering that that base is an inch, like, what, an inch wide, roughly? Well, it depends which one you the get. Strip. Depends which strip you get, but yeah. And even if it's off by five millimeters, it's not, that, no one's going to complain about that. Yeah. So uh, it just it just allows you to play with a bigger footprint and uh, and not have a big part of your base hanging out there. Four. Yeah, that would be too... Anyway. It'll be 120 versus 125, or if you do the 25, so it's fine. I guess what would be really nice is if you came up with like um, six millimeter wide strips and just fit them between each file of guys. You can do that if you want. That seems like a lot of work, though. That seems like a lot of work. It does. You know. I think it would look better that way, though. Yeah, it would, and, uh, but I'm not ready to make move because you could just make movement trays for your guys and put them in there. That's the if you're going to do that, you just do that. With right. thick borders. Oh, big wide movement. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you're going to specifically do something for the game, you don't want to remount your guys, and I would just make movement trays. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to remount my 20 millimeter. Guys. Yeah, and I'm not. not, not I'm not remounting my guys unless some other, you know, <laughs> unforeseen thing unforeseen comes up. thing comes up that would cause <laughs> me to do it. Uh, but at this point, some partially. I mean, I prefer like... guys on 25 bases for various reasons, right. but um, I actually don't like. 
It's all holdover from GW having all these different size bases just because it causes lineup challenges that, right. that this, this game, game doesn't have oh, yes, correct. because of the, the fixed fighting how it works. But you don't want to play with narrow guys because it causes other things to happen. It lets your six inch command stretch a little bit longer. Correct. I correct. Mean, sorry, it's a little shorter in some ways, but it's, in some ways it's longer because right. you can reach over units. Where and it allows you, before. if you don't do the extra wide, pack more guys in. There's just a number of correct. things you can do. Yes. So you, you do want to play with, the, I think, the right size. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and I've been trying to keep them spaced out, but right size I bases. probably haven't. So, like you can see, I'm too close over there. No, nah, it's, right. too, it's too hard not to. Um, yeah. So, but Especially yeah. When you start moving things. Yeah, if, like I said, if, if, to me, the, the simple solution, if you're not ready to make your specific movement trays for these things, is just do strips and fill out the unit. Right. If you want right. to do narrow ones, fine, you know. Yeah. I did the wide ones just because you get bases that size. Right. Yeah, but hmm, you have to do the back too, don't you? Because they're not deep enough either. Uh, well, it depends, it depends what trays you're using, but yeah. Well, like that's a... That's actually the well. Because that one's actually right. that that's actually extra deep. So yeah, it's only a hundred deep though, and it should be well. It's actually correct, isn't it? That's actually for like five and that's like five and a half deep. It looks like on the twenty millimeters. On the no, I think that's actually five by five on twenties. It's not that wide on twenty. Yeah. But it looks like it's five and a half. Just I'm it does looking. Look like it's a little deeper. Yeah, it looks the like guy on the it, far left. Yeah, I'm looking at the extra depth there. there. So yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you can do that. I mean, whatever you wanna wanna. Do. I mean, movement trays aren't particularly hard to make. Yeah. Making magnetic strips for these things, frankly, you could write to uh, uh, Shogun Miniatures. They give you all you want. <laughs> you know, oh, you want to do that. Magnetic strips. Yeah, you can tell them you want six and a half millimeter by uh, <laughs> whatever. To fit whatever your movement trays are. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to, if you want something specific for this game, then that's probably the fastest yeah. thing to do. I, I, I want to, I want to use the right size. Yeah. Trays, but I don't want. I think to the rebase my guys. Right. I think I'm, I'll probably do what you do. Yeah. Right I mean, for now, I think that's just the easy thing to do. And depth, I don't think is as important as a width. I think the width is much more important. Right. Than, than having the correct. And it depends because yeah, certain. I'm not decided on the right size units yet for different armies. Right. Yeah, that's true too. That's. I think humans and orcs, it's pretty straightforward. You want to go maximum because they're cheap enough. Yeah. Uh, for most of your guys. Um, so let me ask you this. And, and, you know, I know we kind of mentioned it before, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll put it out right now for other people to put their opinions if they were to. And that's why we're having this conversation. I'm. I'm um, <laughs> I'm curious what you think about the ability in this game. Like, I can take this army. I can peel, whatever, three guys off the back of that um, halberdier unit and put three individual guys out there on the field. Now they, you know, because I think you can only have four of one type, unit type. Correct. So I, that would give me four units of halberdiers. One of, right. one of 16... I'm sorry, one of 17 and three of one. Right. Which gives you a huge flexibility of gumming things up. No, I think it's a broken thing in the burning, system. Burning activations. Yeah. Uh, you know, is that a, this is a thing? Or, you know, do our work? I guess the question I have for you in particular is, do you think we should try to implement some house rule thing with five minimum? Um, I think we should think about it because I... Um, I looked at it, it's like, oh my god, this just be an easy way to do really well in this game because you just send out a whole cloud of individual cheap models, right? And you just plop them in front of people so they never fight your blocks, and you just shoot them he, off the he table. Either charges you and kills it, yeah, and now gets his subject to counter charge, or you just charge, or you just walk or charge up, charge up, charge him and kill him, right? Let him kill you, activate himself because you've burned your one guy, yep. And then hit him again. Now he's activated. Well, you can do funky things too, because I can advance to you. So when you charge me, all of a sudden you have to pivot ninety degrees because you're in my flank. Right. Exactly. Now you're facing the wrong way on top of it. Correct. And then I shoot you in the flank. Yeah. So. Yeah, and on top of that, there's the other thing is where you've got the one guy, which all of a sudden now the mage and the big units of you know a big unit of archer has to target him. Yes. You know, unless you're elves, yeah. of course. Yeah. And then so then you have a. All, you can take all these activations. You can end up with 10 activations that do nothing. Correct. 
and it's waiting for your opponent to do everything. So no, I think that's a uh, and on top of that, they're all single figure mop units. So correct. They can so they're really hard all to all over the and place. they're really hard to hit with war machines. Oh, correct. So I was thinking about they can pivot yeah, during your opponent's turn. Absolutely. So no, I I think that's a broken own. thing in the game that that they had didn't think Probably about. Need to address. They didn't think about. Comp I don't think they thought about competitive gamers in the context of that. <laughs> the same yes, with the taking true. whatever you want if you play that kind of game. Right. Um, I, I think that's kind of a broken thing in the in the system. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna play this game, I, I think you have to have a little. You either have to have a house rule that you guys play by, or you're gonna have to do a uh, a bit of a honor system, which is kind of the same as a house rule. Yeah. Yeah. In you know my opinion, right? right. Yeah, because no, I saw that right. I think we had that conversation. Yes, we, we had the conversation. Else, like, why wouldn't I just take one of all these different guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and just flood the field? Yeah, with all these activations yeah. and make you take activations to kill them, and, right? You know, and then the other guy starts doing it, and now we're playing a skirmish game. Exactly. <laughs> Which you know, whatever. We're moving one figure at a time Correct. individually. Yes. And then pivoting them all. <laughs> yeah, and after all that's cleared out, then you've got your units left. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I think um, I think it's a mistake in the system that there should be not just maximum size units, there should be minimum size units for all the troop types. I agree, and I think I think I would push towards what five infantry and three cav or two. I think you have to start with five attack dice. I think that's the easy way to do it. Okay, that's not terrible. Yeah. And that, that character that could still be two models if you take like a champion. Are you a, allowing a champ? Would you allow a champion to count towards that? Yeah, I would. Okay. Because so, they're not they're not inexpensive. So. Correct. Okay. Five attack dice. Yeah. But that. So even like trolls and ogres. So they have two of them. So you minimum size two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't done the ones yet. I was I was uh, threatening to at one point. Well, because that's a very tempting thing to do with a lot of the monstrous guys is just take four units of one. Correct. Not just trolls, all of them. Yeah, the wolvers, the trolls. Yeah, because they're pretty resilient. Wolvers. So it's they're not easy to get rid of. Correct. You know. So. And the advantage in the game is if <laughs> the other weird thing about the game is you you um, get killed, you get disrupted, and then kill, and then fail your morale test. After you're disrupted, you cause cascading panic. Right. If you just get shot off and killed, you don't. Exactly. And again, there's your single model yes. theory: is the single models are running around. Who yeah. cares if they got shot? Exactly, off and panicking. that's why they're like the ultimate chaff in the game. So right. yeah, no, I, I just think that's a broken thing in the game. Okay. So I think you sh they really should have a a minimum size. Right. The easy one to me is five five attack dice, since that's the that's actually not a bad idea. The five attack dice is good. Yeah. Just thinking of where that might be a problem. It's um, it's the it's the cavalry. You get a champion and a, it's a champion and a guy and a guy or three got three cav and you're you know, set or three cav and three cav yeah. doesn't bother me and two cav doesn't so so much bother me because they're not so cheap right <laughs> you know but um but, but uh, having making it three is not a problem yeah I guess this I guess thinking of the individual units it means the gargoyles have to be bought in fives so that's fine yeah okay. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's a nice way of handling that, I think. Let's, five combat dice. Let's 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 see what if anybody posts any suggestions. Correct. <laughs> we'll run it by our couple other people that are playing. Yeah. Right now we've got a small group. Only four of us are actually playing a few games, so right. We'll see if that expands. So, all right. And I have another couple of people that are interested in playing, but yeah, one hasn't got around to it, and one's plague central, so you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we also need to um, um, kind of we kind of blew the uh, kind of got ahead of ourselves with this chat here, but we also were talking about doing a kind of a plus minus video, right? What, what we like and what we don't like. Yeah, yeah we'll we'll still do that this at some point. Yeah. So we we need to get together and do that at some yep, point yep. as well. That'll probably be our next recording. Now that we're like seven games in, it's uh. There you go. I'm at least seven games yeah, in. Yeah, we need to do that before we stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. I, I'm, I'm having a good time with this game. Still. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So even after I lost two games in a row, <laughs> so you know, what, what can I say? Well, you won this one, so you made up for it. My last game was a win. So yeah, you're right. So that's a, that's that's <laughs> so, fine. So the depression subsided. <laughs> <laughs> for a while there, I was thinking the orcs were unbeatable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. filthy 
Yeah, we'll just talk <laughs> a different story. All right. Um, all right. That's going to do it for now. Thanks for listening. Till next time. <laughs>